The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned, and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's nephew, was spending his summer vacation with a masked man and Tonto. Dan left camp one morning and rode the trail that paralleled the Pecos River. Suddenly, the young man was startled by a scream. Who? Oh, who, oh, Mr. Hoba, who? Oh. Dan saw a Mustang ridden by a young Indian girl gallop around the bend ahead. That Indian girl can't control the Mustang. Hang on, I'll help you! The Mustang swerved as he passed Dan, who immediately started in pursuit. Come on, Victor, come on! Dan's beautiful white horse, Victor, rapidly overtook the frightened girl's horse. And as he moved up beside the Mustang, Dan reached out, saying... Stop the reins! I'll lift you from the saddle! Hold on! Ho, ho, Victor! Hold on! Ho, ho! Ho, steady! You're all right now. Here. Steady, Victor! Oh, please, please, thank you, thank you for helping, Mawa. Snake frightened horse. Him run away. Your your name is Mawa? Oh, it mean little bird. Me princess, daughter of Chief Big Eagle. I'm Dan Reed. Dan Reed. That nice name. You nice young brave. I think you're very beautiful, Mawa. That make Mawa very happy. Me not forget you, Dan. Dan stood a moment, staring in open admiration at the beautiful young Indian girl. Her raven black hair fell in two long braids, and a narrow beaded band around her head gave her a regal appearance. He noticed her delicate features and the smooth nut-brown complexion. Then he was brought from his reverie by her low, pleasant laugh. <laughs> young, pale-faced, brave, not see Indian girl before, maybe. Oh, uh... <laughs> I've seen other Indian girls, but... Well, you're the prettiest I've ever seen. Uh, I'd better go get your horse now. Then I'll ride with you to the edge of your village. When Dan returned to camp, he told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the Indian girl. That night at the cafe in the nearby town of Riverdale, two men sat talking in low voices. I tell you, Jake, it's an easy way to make money, 
There's a big commotion among the American people about the bounty hunters. But while it lasts, we can get $200 in cash for every Indian scalp. Where? South of the border, in the Mexican border state of Chihuahua. The governor of that state issued the order. I uh, hear the Mexican government is going to put a stop to it. But till they do, we might as well cash in. You mean to go south of the border and find some? I did go there and got a few. But the Apaches know what's doing, so they've cleared out. It's risky business, Bushy. Oh, what are you nervous about? We get some scouts, sneak across the border at night and cash them in. I've uh, noticed small Indian hunting parties, three or four at the most, go into Green Valley every day. We just go there, wait for a few to come along, and ambush them. All right, when do we start? In the morning. All right, let's get out of here. The following morning, Bushy and Jake waited in hiding in the valley. Finally, they heard hoofbeats on the trail. Bushy looked out from behind the large rocks, then spoke. Apaches, three of them. This is our chance. Have your gun ready, Jake. All right. They're close enough. Now let them have it. <laughs> Got one. The other two turned and beat it. Come on. I'll go to the one line on the trail. Wait. Huh? Somebody coming from the other direction. Hey, hey, look, coming around the bend. A masked man and an Indian. Let's get away from here. Get up there. Get up, get up. Come on. A few moments later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rain beside the fallen Apache. Oh, 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 oh easy, oh, easy, oh, easy, easy, easy. Oh. He's dead, Toto. Ah. Someone shoot from ambush. Me here, two shots. Yes. This may cause trouble. We'll bury him, Toto. Then try to pick up the trail of the killers. After digging a shallow grave for the unfortunate Indian, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched for the killer's tracks and finally found them. Oh, 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 easy. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. Here are hoof marks behind these big rocks, Toto. Ah. It looked like them wait here, then leave in hurry. Yes. Toto, you follow them and leave a clear trail. I'll disguise my features, then go warn the sheriff in town to be prepared for trouble. Later, I'll come after you to help capture those two men. The Lone Ranger quickly disguised his features at a nearby stream. Then, putting his mask on over the disguise for the time being, rejoined Tonto, saying, Don't try to move in on them alone, Tonto. I'll follow you shortly. Uh -huh. We'll leave now, and then... Look, he must not be Apaches. Yes, yeah, so they're attacking from all sides. Hold your fire, Tonto. Raise your hand in the sign of friendship. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They're pale faces who shoot three foot. Tonto, tell them what happened. Oh, uh, Temaho. Malo Hete. Ne me lato, ate muta plipo. English, you say two other pale faces kill Apaches. You bury Fleetfoot. That's right. You not tell truth. We see you stop. Bend over, Fleetfoot. You shoot at Apaches. Kill Fleetfoot. We take you to Apache village. No. Are you having a chance with so many, Tonto? We'll go with them. Perhaps we can convince the chief. Uh, but this not good. Take guns. I am hand. Surrounded by armed and angry Apaches, the Lone Ranger and Tonto offered no resistance as their guns were taken and their hands tied. They were then helped onto their horses. Oh, now we go to Patsy Village. When they arrived at the village, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were taken before Chief Big Eagle. As they stood before the chief, the masked man looked around at the ominously silent braves, who already decked out in war paint, formed a circle around them. Chief Big Eagle has kept peace with white men, but you have killed Fleetfoot and wounded another of my braves. Listen, Chief Big Eagle, we did not fire the shots that killed Fleetfoot and wounded your brave. 
We heard the shots and came to find out what had happened. He speaks with forked tongue. Me see him stop near Fleetfoot. Apache, uh, not believe what you say. Me take off mask. Look at face of Indian killer. Chief Bigger, listen. I call upon your Thunderbird God to hear that I speak the truth. Let one of us go to find the killers. Hold the other as hostage. No. No brave say trick. Them say pale face must die by fire. Huddle. Huddle. Look, they've captured Dan. Dan, how did this happen? I rode to find you. You will not talk. Brave tell about young white man. Young brave come to place where Fleetfoot die. Him stop, look at ground. We capture him, bring him to village. Uh, that good. Him friend of two who shoot Apache. What's this all about, sir? It, it's all a mistake, Dan. I wish you hadn't tried to find us. Today, them die by fire at stake. Then Apache, go on warpath. We kill many pale face. I the Apaches, convinced that the Lone Ranger and Tonto had fired on the hunting party, and realizing that Dan was their friend, decided that the three were to be burned at the stake. The masked man, Dan and Tonto, were tied to posts placed close together. Then as dried brush and branches were piled around their feet, the Apaches performed a dance of death. The Lone Ranger, more concerned for Dan and Tonto than he was for his own safety, racked his brain for some means of escaping the horrible ordeal before them. Tonto, there must be some way, something we can do to get out of this. Patsy, plenty man. Them think we kill brave. Them not listen to truth. Do, do you think they'll really go through with it? They aren't bluffing, Dan. I can't let them do this to you. I'll get loose somehow, and if I do... Yeah. <sighs> No use. These rawhide thongs are too tight. Uh, I guess I'm not very brave. I can't bear to think of what they're going to do to us. We not show fear, Dan. Them torture victim who show fear. We wait. Hope. Dan, say a silent prayer. We must have faith. Yes, sir. For a few moments, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan bowed their heads in prayer. Then Dan looked up and spoke. I'm not afraid anymore. We're in the hands of our Heavenly Father now. If it's his will that we... What's happening now, Tonto? Braves come with lighted torch. Squaws, other braves, follow. Oh, uh, Mano. Thunderbird God of Apache. Will that spirits of those who kill Fleetfoot be sent to him for punishment. Wait, wait, Chief Big Eagle. We are not afraid to die. But the boy is young. Let him go. He was not there when your braves were fired upon. Him, friend of killers. Him, die. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there like you used to remember. The devil delights, the Jim jams, the banana flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. to continue. Tied to a stake to be burned alive, 
the Lone Ranger pleaded with the Indian chief to spare Dan Reed's life. But Big Eagle refused. Then the chief's daughter, Mawa, came forward. She ran to Dan, pulled aside the brush, and stood beside the young man, saying, Do not burn young pale-faced brave. Mawa, your princess daughter, pleads for his life. Uh, why does daughter of Chief Big Eagle protect young white brave? He is the one who saved my life. Dan is my friend. He would not kill Apache. Oh, him. Him friend of killers. Mawa. Tell them they didn't kill the Apache brave. My friend Dan does not speak with forked tongue. He says they did not kill. Oh, I give you his life, Mawa. Young brave shall not die. Release him. Over. At the chief's command, two braves sprang forward and cut the thongs that bound Dan to the post. But Dan stood where he was, saying, Mawa, if my friends are to die, I die with them. You are brave, Dan, but I can do no more. Tell the chief to let the tall, pale face go. Let him hold the Indian and me as hostages for his return. He will bring back the killers. And if he does not? Give us until sundown tomorrow. If he doesn't return with the killers, then let us die. Dan, I can't let you risk it. It's only chance, Kimasabi. Wait, Dan. Mama will speak to the chief, my father, alone. The Indian girl went to the chief and spoke earnestly for a few moments. Then the chief said, We shall wait until sundown tomorrow. Then young brave and Indian will die. If tall pale face does not return with killers of Fleet Fort, The Lone Ranger was released and his horse Silver brought to him. Then his guns empty of bullets were handed to him. Dan and Tonto, with hands tied, stood before one of the huts as the Lone Ranger prepared to leave. I'll trail those men, Tonto, and I'll get help from Fort Stockton. Don't worry. I'll be back by sundown tomorrow. Adios, easy. See the big fella. Come on, After leaving the Apache village, the Lone Ranger, still in disguise, went to the place where he and Tonto had found the tracks of the killer's horses. Then he started on their trail. Tied in one of the huts and under guard at the Apache village since the previous evening, Dan and Tonto anxiously watched the day drawing to a close. Tonto, it'll soon be sundown. It was the only thing I could think of to keep them from burning you and the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger, not Taylor. Dan, soon sun go down. Tall Fred not come back. He will, Mawa. Mawa talk to Chief, but him say promise must be kept. His tall pale face not return with killers of people. Him come back. Mawa hope so. Me not want you to die. We don't want to die. I'm sure our friend will return. Chief say him save own life. Stay away. Let friends die. No, Mawa, he wouldn't do that. Thanks for all you've done for us. You good. Plenty brave. Maybe Chief make you blood brother. Then you become Apache brave. And someday, you and Mawa... Oh, gosh, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, I, I couldn't desert my Indian friend, Tano. No, Mawa, if, if he dies, I must go with him. I go now. Ask Thunderbird God to delay sun in heavens, to bring back your friend. Indian girl like you plenty much, Dan. I know, but, well, I... Some, someday her marry son a chief from other tribe. It better that way. Sun, sun go down now. Tall one not keep promise. Oh, no. Apache say it time, tie you to stake. Start fire. Apaches keep promise. Now we avenge death of fleet foot. Marite, go Two braves moved to the side of Dan and Tonto, yeah. then led them from the hut. As they walked toward the stakes where most of the tribe had again gathered, fast hoofbeats were heard approaching. Look, there comes the Lone Ranger now. 
and army officers with him, and they're bringing two men tied to horses. Horses, oh, ho, easy, ho, Billy Bigelow. Ho, 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 easy. Chief Big Eagle, here are the two men who killed Fleetfoot. Go on, go on. You have kept your promise. Your friends shall go free. The real murderers will be punished. Hey, stop them. Don't let them burn us. Shut up, you. Chief, this is the great white father from the fort. Major Dyer has come to talk to you. These men have confessed their crime, Chief Big Eagle. They will be punished according to the laws of the white men. Apache, say no. We take him prisoner. Burn him at stake. Now wait, wait, Chief. Look, coming down the slopes, many troopers. They mean no harm to your tribe, but these men must go with them. As the Indians watched, troopers moved in from every direction and stopped at the edge of the village. Then the Major spoke. Chief Big Eagle, we come in peace. Those who bother your people will be punished by us. Put away your war paint and bonnets. Let us live together in peace. As the Major talked, the Lone Ranger cut the thorns that held Dan and Toto. Then, leading Silver and unmolested by the Apaches, the two men and Dan walked back toward the horses, tethered beyond the huts. Chief Big Eagle spoke solemnly. Tall, pale face, keep word. Me take word of his friends now. It good. Apache give up prisoners to white chief. You punish him. We make peace. Be friends to friends of tall one and of young white brave. Mawa say, maybe someday him be blood brother of Apache. No, my father. Dan has gone. I, I saw him and his friend right away. He is good and brave. Mawa shall not forget. He's in good hands, Mawa. That young man is very fortunate to have a friend like the Lone Ranger. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or our casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Listen to the Lone Ranger. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Early one afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling at a leisurely pace through the rock-studded hills of southern Kansas. Suddenly, the masked man exclaimed, Tonto, look. Uh, Tonto on trail ahead. He's been hurt. Come on, Silver. Come on, come on. The Lone Ranger raced to Pete Higgins' side. Oh, oh, oh he's a big fellow. We need our medical supplies, Tonto. Uh, I'll see how badly he's wounded. Yes, but he's hurt badly. Uh, uh, bullets hit him in the head and shoulder, huh? It's a good thing we found him. Another half hour like this, uh, and he might have... Him lose plenty of blood. Dirty skunks. Bush like me for the railroad money. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. 
The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.